My name is Sarah Hardy. I am the curator and manager of the De Morgan Foundation's collection. And today I'm going to be discussing Evelyn De Morgan's rejection of material wealth in the context of the inclusion of one of her paintings in an exhibition in Bonn in Germany, and also in the context of which it was made. So to have a quick look at Victorian society and how capitalism affected uh, the socio-economic um, politics of the day. But the painting itself is currently in an exhibition in Bonn in Germany, which you can see here, uh, which focuses on capitalism. It's called We Capitalist and is at the Bundeskunsthalle in Bonn in Germany at present. Uh, the exhibition is wonderful, as you can see from this brilliant orange industrial style architecture, which forms the basis and the walls of the exhibition and the exhibition design, which of course is done to sort of really root our thinking and understanding in capitalism and capitalist culture and how that's so firmly rooted in the idea of the, the working classes, which we can see here in this sort of wonderful industrialised view of the exhibition versus the upper classes and those with wealth and of course those with power. The exhibition split, it's an enormous exhibition um, and it's split into about 10 different sections. It begins with understanding um, capitalism and it has an introduction to capitalist uh, ideals and values before going on to explore artistic responses to capitalism throughout the ages. Uh, and Evelyn de Morgan's wonderful painting, The Worship of Mammon, is hung in the exhibition in the section which looks at capitalism and faith. So this link I will make available to the exhibition. It's a fantastic tool and you can, uh, whilst the exhibition's closed, it just enables you to be able to walk around the whole thing, which I think is quite clever. Uh, so I'll share a link for that on, uh, on our Facebook page at the end of this video. Um, so in the exhibition, like I said, I've just chosen a few key pieces which I think really um, establish the, uh, the, our understanding of capitalism and, and really get to the heart of what this exhibition is about. And one of the oldest pieces on display in the capitalist, uh, capitalism exhibition is uh, this eight escudo piece uh, which is embossed with Philip V of Spain, so a Spanish coin, uh, which is actually from Lima and Peru. So this is really starting to get us to think about empire and the idea of colonialism being quite central to capitalism. Um, and obviously it's, it's one of the oldest um, indicators of a uh, global movement of money. So whereas money once um, stood for goods and the exchange of goods, it then became a desirable thing to have in its own right. And that's when capitalism really begins. Of course, there's only so many goods that one can exchange with another. However, wealth is infinite. infinite. And the idea of amassing this wealth is something that is really at the heart of capitalism, this want and this desire. Um, the show then goes on through the 19th century, which we'll look at with uh, our Evelyn Morgan paintings, before picking up on contemporary artists and their response to uh, ideas around capitalism and capitalist culture. And of course, quite ironically, art is at the centre of that. Art has been given an intrinsic value, which is far beyond the value of the piece of art itself due to its culture and its celebrity. And again, this idea, this want uh, to own the artwork. So I thought this was quite a clever uh, presentation of the idea of capitalism in, in the context of art. Uh, and you can see this piece here is a painting of a sheep. Um, it's called Value of Art, Sheep's Head by Christa Summerer and Laurent Minogneux. And underneath it is a, a tape that prints out this sort of long receipt. And the first calculation of the painting is what the cost of that painting is itself. So how much the oils and the frame and the canvas cost. So obviously that's minimal. What this machine then does is use a thermodynamic frame to calculate the amount of time people spend in front of it compared to other artworks in the exhibition and also to take a view on the art market and the stock market to come up with the value of the exhibition. And this receipt prints off throughout the show, getting longer and longer and the, the total value of the artwork increases and increases throughout the exhibition. The irony of course being it's actually only worth the same as it was at the start. It's just the ideas and the, the longing and the looking that have been impressed upon it which increases its wealth. A really powerful image in the exhibition uh, is this one uh, by Johnny Miller um, and this is a huge uh, piece that takes up one of the, the, the first walls as you walk into the exhibition and 
Um, I think it's a really clever way of looking at capitalist culture society and its effects on everyday life. Um, Miller used a drone and drone photography um, to look at various different countries and cultures in his series Unequal Scenes. This one is a detail from a piece made between 2016 and 2019 in which he takes photographs over Nairobi in Kenya. In Kenya, uh, the top 10% uh, of, of people own the top 52% of the wealth. So there's this huge disparity between uh, sort of the ordinary life of the middle classes and the burgeoning poverty in this country. And if you ever needed a way to visually um, see that, then this image is it. So we have this sort of middle class street here, right next to a slum. And looking at that from the air really just sort of hammers home um, the difference that it can make to be born either poor or rich within our capitalist culture. So I thought that was an amazing image that I wanted to share with you there. So as we've seen, um, Evelyn de Morgan's The Worship of Mammon has been included in this exhibition. Uh, the message of this picture is really uh, sort of evident and hard-hitting and instant. Um, so with the title, then with this visualisation, um, it, it's really apparent what the artist is trying to say. Um, Mammon was a figure of the Old Testament who stood for the worship of material wealth. Of course, in Christianity, the worship of any other false god is uh, is completely uh, rejected. That's uh, you know, there's only one true god in Christianity. So the fact that this idol exists at all um, is uh, really questioning Christian values. And we can see here the young woman draped in this purple and pink robe is kneeling before the god itself. Whilst his money bag is stretched out beyond her, she can't even see that anymore. So the idea of this painting is that this woman has become so obsessed with the worship of wealth. Of course, one of the deadly sins was greed as well. Her greed's gone so much further beyond that that she's now worshipping Mammon himself, which is directly at odds uh, of her Christian values, which is the, the core message of that painting. This picture has been included in a section of the exhibition We Capitalists in the Bundeskunsthalle in Bonn which discusses the idea that capitalist values rely on faith. Without the belief in money and the belief in material wealth being the optimum, so at the, sort of the top of the, the mountain and the top of our trajectory, um, then, then capitalism wouldn't exist at all. It really relies on uh, our value system, praising wealth above all else. And whilst that has been uh, directly at odds with uh, religions such as Christianity, this exhibition it very cleverly uh, sort of looks at what was happening in the 19th century, even though this was becoming an increasingly secular society, how values managed to, uh, the value system managed to maintain and almost promote um, capitalist wants. So even though the Christian values of virtue were central to Victorian culture and society, um, they, they still managed to to use that uh, to, to create, um, this, you know, capitalism was still king. And that picture uh, sort of unpicks that. Its inclusion in the exhibition is very clever. It's been displayed directly next to this portrait of Olivia Peyton Murray Cutting, painted in 1887 by Alexandra Cabanel. Um, she was an American socialite. Her family were 18th century settlers in Manhattan and went from being Surrey landowners in England to wealthy uh, Manhattan landowners. In 1877, she married William Cutting, uh, who was an industrial merchant. So we've got old money and new money meeting together. But what's still at the heart of society? Money. Uh, and so whilst um, you know, that society was changing so that new money was um, was becoming uh, the culture. With that, you know, the people of the working classes, merchant uh, class, weren't bringing with them their values of hard work and their values of seeing beyond wealth. They were bringing their values of wealth and thus the capitalist system was maintained. And I just think it's a really clever placement of these two pictures next to each other because it allows us to see this pink dress uh, twice. So pink being the colour of innocence and of virtue, 
uh, sort of shows off to us in the Evelyn de Morgan picture, we can sort of get the idea there that um, this woman is innocent. It's almost a system blaming painting uh, because she's she's so blinded by what the what her religion and what the society around her are driving her towards that she's become blind to her own spirituality. Whereas the woman on the right, this the portrait of Mary Cutting there is. The pink dress in it again, it's so stark when it's in comparison to the de Morgan picture because what it does is show the dress off itself to be something to be wanted and to be desired. And whether that's innocence of virtue or this very wealthy, very upper class lifestyle that this socialite has is pulled into question. You can see there that it's not just the dress, but she's also surrounded by these beautiful opulent objects, the silk cushion, the fur, the fan, uh, on this beautiful red silk sofa and the depth of the picture is, uh, is brilliant with this very dark contrast to her pale skin uh, which draws us into the picture and uh, enables us to see the, um, the other sort of objects that are on the tapestries and the wallpapers, it's very lavish interior. So almost that she's become objectified herself, so that capitalism has gone so far beyond the desire for things that it's a desire to be and a desire to present yourself um, in this very uh, objectified way, which is exactly what the portrait does. Uh, and I think showing the two of them together shows that whether it's religion um, or society, there are always these underlying issues of faith and belief which help to drive capitalism. Mammon was uh, painted in 1909 and this drive for uh, wanting material wealth and that inhibiting spirituality, which is a theme explored in that picture, was one that Evelyn de Morgan had actually tackled a number of times before, particularly in 1897 when she painted this picture, Earthbound, and this one, Blindness and Cupidity Chase Joy from the City. So in both of these pictures, we see uh, the man with his money bags, the figure in red in this painting and the figure in gold in this painting, um, desperately clutching onto their money despite the fact their spirituality, their joy is leaving them far behind. So we see the white cloaked figure flying off towards the horizon in Earthbound. This is the old miser's spirituality completely failing him because he's chosen material wealth over spiritual wealth. And we have the same idea here in blindness and cupidity, we have the, the old man looking down um, with, his, with his money, cupidity meaning the want of material wealth, yet again, chasing this young innocent figure of joy out from the city walls in which he inhabits, um, only to leave himself in this, this sort of dark and blinded life. Um, so uh, again, what I liked about uh, these two pictures, having thought so much about the colours in Mammon with its placement in the We Capitalist exhibition, is uh, we get the same colour palette working through both of these paintings, the miser, the person who's uh, desperately wanting material wealth, is in gold and red. Um, the idea is it's sort of the spiritual blindness in this, it's the angel of death with her robes, is dressed in purple. And in blindness and cupidity, it's this idea of spiritual blindness, is dressed again in these dark blue colours. And the figure of uh, of joy or of spirituality is in a pink robe, much the same as the pink we've discussed in the previous two uh, two paintings in the exhibition there, uh, and this pink of innocence again, so uh, you know, chasing your innocence away with your uh, demonic, I suppose, want uh, of this wealth is something that is very much and very overtly portrayed by de Morgan in her, um, in her paintings. She wasn't alone in uh, in relying on um, this cultural element as a source of inspiration, uh, and indeed the spiritual element, and that is particularly um, shown in uh, some of her earlier, some of her predecessors in the pre-Raphaelite paintings. So here we've got Hunt's Light of the World, um, a beautiful painting of Christ knocking on a door without a handle, trying to bring the light inside. And the idea there is that unless you open your arms and your heart and let, let Christ in, then your world will be uh, without without light. It was such a famous painting in its time, it had attracted this amazing celebrity and it was shipped uh, around the world from America to Australia um, and became a real icon and, and beacon of hope in its time. It's probably one of the most well-known images of its day. Why does that fit in with uh, thinking about capitalism? 
When you show it next to its pendant painting, The Awakening Consciousness, Conscience, a big pardon, now in the collection of Tate Britain, um, you can see that someone has heard the knock. And in this painting, it's uh, this, for her time, scantily clad woman um, sat in a maison de convenience. So this is her lover. She's his mistress, not his wife. Um, again, like I said, sort of shown by the fact that she's in her undergarments there. Um, and this painting shows her awakening to the fact that she's doing wrong. She's in this house of opulence, but that's not bringing her her true spiritual worth. And you can see there that the window is flung open in, the, uh, in front of her. We see it in the mirror behind her. And she rises from the lap of uh, this gentleman who's keeping her and uh, decides that she wants to make her break before she becomes discarded like the glove at her feet. So whilst um, the uh, Christ knocking at the door might not have seemed like a painting questioning uh, the capitalist society itself, when you see it with its, uh, its, its pendant image here, the awakening conscience, you can see that it, the, really what is at the heart of that painting is a questioning of um, the moral values that capitalism brings in. Uh, and the fact that having wealth really can blind people in their own domestic space, in their own interiors, they're not going to hear the knock of Christ and they're not going to open the door and that's going to be much to their detriment. Um, just move my image there for you so we can all see the quote. Uh, another artist that was very interested in um, this idea of rejection of wealth and the rejection of the capitalist system was G.F. Watts, a good friend of Evelyn de Morgan. Rather than elevate the awakening uh, or the or the visualization of the fleeting spirituality of the rich, G.F. Watts instead decided to elevate the status of the poor to that of high art. And I think it's worth remembering at this point that art was usually the reserve of subjects such as history and of uh, religious scenes um, or portraiture. Painting something so contemporary and so, with such gritty realism really wasn't uh, fashionable in 1850. And Watts displayed this painting in art galleries that would have been attended by young men like uh, our, um, our young chap in the Holman Hunt painting here. Uh, and to, so, to see their actions and how their actions were causing a society that had become much more polarised under industrialisation. And even though they were benefiting from the wealth of that capitalist society uh, and the, the burgeoning middle classes, the impact of that was much wider and it had created a huge amount of poor who were living in poverty. And in his painting, The Irish Famine, what really elevates the status of these um, of the people living in poverty to wanting to show them um, as as worthy of attention and attention by the middle classes and really sort of a, an advertisement for people with money and power to do something about uh, maybe not just their own status but to think a bit more widely about society. Like I said, Evelyn de Morgan was a friend of Watts, and the t the quote across the top of the screen there, um, is, is really a, a lovely quote. It's from Watts's wife, Mary Watts's diary in 1892. And she says there that Mrs. De Morgan is our only visitor. She's sitting with G.F. Watts and they're talking about the change that might be wrought for mankind if they were to reject this idea of money getting for self, she calls it. So this kind of quite intrinsic capitalist idea and reject all of that to reach a universal idea of happiness. Um, and I think this painting in particular is one that really focuses on that sort of by looking at people who have nothing we might be able to start to develop a society more directed um, towards them and in their favour. And uh, a final picture uh, that I really wanted to show you here to um, kind of finish on and to think about the capitalist society and society in general in the Victorian period is Ford Maddox Brown's work from 1863. He painted two versions of this painting between 1852 and 1863. One is now in Manchester Art Gallery, one is in Birmingham Art Gallery, which I think is wonderful and speaks volumes for itself in that these are these big burgeoning industrial towns of the time that have these real polarised middle classes. Uh, but despite that, this is a scene um, from close 
refers to his home in Hampstead in London. And we can see in the background there these two uh, rather uh, middle class looking um, dandy couple on horseback trotting up the street there in their very um, well to do London suburb and being stopped dead by all of this mad action. We've got these nivvies, as they were known, digging up the road to build um, probably the new sewer. Uh, and around them, a real cross section of people from society. So we have the young um, peasant girl at the front there holding a young child with her brother and this dog, and it's sort of this mad chaos of living in poverty. To the left, we've got flower sellers, but also these middle class ladies with their huge skirts trying to bypass and step beyond the work that's going on there. Um, and I just think it's such a wonderful painting for, again, this idea that Watts had of bringing this gritty realism to the art galleries and showing people what society truly looked like and asking them to confront those great disparities between the middle classes and the lower classes in society and sort of really question um, the, the moral uh, element of that. Um, we have Thomas Carlyle on the right hand side of the painting looking in, uh, again, sort of a, a moral philosopher of the day I suppose, looking in halfway across this picture and, and uh, really therefore cementing this idea that we should be questioning um, these, uh, these ideas in society. Um, a wonderful painting to end on uh, and we can see there that a range of 19th century artists were using capitalism and looking at the society that this new industrialized society uh, with this big middle class that had presented itself to them as an inspiration for their artwork. Artists like Evelyn de Morgan with her paintings Earthbound and Blindness and Cupidity and the worship of Mammon um, really looked at uh, sort of the, the decline in spirituality uh, and the increasing secularization of society that this brought um, and how this might affect uh, each person's own individual spirituality uh, versus artists like Brown uh, who really looked at the sort of gritty realism of society and asked us to question, uh, question what that meant there. Um, I'll leave it there for today. Thank you so much for uh, for joining me and for um, listening to this talk. If you've enjoyed it, there is, of course, uh, as always, a link in the description of the Facebook Live event uh, where you can click and give a donation. Um, we usually ask for a £5 donation for attendance in the talks. And as you can see, we're trying to raise £2,000 at the moment to see us through this period of closures and having to shut exhibitions and close real life events. So any donation you can make uh, on Facebook would be greatly, greatly appreciated by myself and the trustees.